good morning to everyone in the last class we discussed about x-ray crystallography in that we saw about theory principle instrumentation and application of x-ray crystallography in today's class we'll be discussing about nmr spectroscopy so what is nmr spectroscopy the full form of nmr spectroscopy is nuclear magnet resonance spectroscopy it is one of the analytical technique to determine the protein structure as like x-ray crystallography so the principle behind or the NMR spectroscopy studies about the molecules and its interactions with the help of the radio frequencies and also with the help of the magnetic field. It also determines about the physical and chemical properties of the each molecule in the sample. And the two scientists called Purcell and then Bloch was the first person to determine about the NMR spectroscopy and both awarded Nobel Prize in the year 1952. And also, there are two types of NMR spectroscopy. They are called H1 NMR and C13 NMR. H1 NMR will deal with the hydrogen atom studies, whereas C13 NMR will deal with the carbon atoms present in the molecule. And it is also will study about the interaction of the carbon atoms with another atoms in the molecule. So the study of NMR or the emergence of NMR was started in the year 1943 itself. So, Octave Stern was the first person who studied about the magnetic properties of the atoms or protons and also he awarded Nobel Prize in the year 1943 in the area of physics. And then the another person this is called Isidore, he studied about the resonance method to determine about the magnetic properties of the atomic molecules. He also awarded Nobel Prize in the year 1944 in the area of physics and then as we know the Purcell and the Bloch was the first person to determine about the NMR studies and also he done major studies related to the concept of NMR and also both awarded Nobel Prize in the year 1952. And then the scientist Richard was the other person who discovered about the high resolution NMR properties and the concepts and also he awarded Nobel Prize in the year 1991 in the field of chemistry. Now we are going to look at the principle of NMR. So, the principle of NMR is mainly depends on the spinning properties of the nucleus and their interactions. So, with the help of the magnetic field. Without magnetic field, the nuclear spin will be random in nature. When we apply strong or external magnetic field to the molecule, whatever we are going to analyze, the strong magnetic field will cause the energy transfer. So, the energy transfer causes the molecule to travel from ground state to upper state. When the spin reaches the ground state, it emits radio frequency. So the emitted radio frequency will help us to give you the NMR spectrum. With the help of the NMR spectrum, we are able to find the atoms or molecules present in the sample with the help of the strong applied magnetic field. Now we are going to see about the instrumentation of NMR spectroscopy. The NMR instrument will have the sample tube or sample holder magnetic coil, permanent magnet, sweep generator and receiver and transmitter for radio frequency and then readout system will be there. Now we are going to discuss about the instrumentation part of NMR in detail. So first one is sample tube. So sample tube has to be chemically inert, durable and transparent to the NMR radiation and it has to be 8.5 centimeter long and 0.3 centimeter in diameter is usually employed in NMR spectroscopy and then magnetic field or you can say permanent magnet. It helps to induce or produce the magnetic field at the range or frequency of 60 to 100 megahertz. And then magnetic coil. It induced magnetic field when current is passed through and then sweep generator. So this sweep generator helps to produce equal amount of magnetic field to the sample surface and then radio magnetic transmitter or radio frequency transmitter. So it will transmit the radio frequency to the pair of coils where the frequency will be 80 megahertz usually. So then radio frequency receiver, it will receive the radio frequencies emitted by the nuclei at the lower level stage. And then signal recorder, this is the final part of the NMR spectroscopy, it will amplify all the recorded signals. So how will our NMR spectrum is look like? So the NMR spectrum is plotted against the intensity of the NMR peaks with the frequencies along with the NMR standard that is called PMS. 
So the full form of TMS is tetramethylsilane. Mostly TMS is used as a reference standard in NMR spectroscopy. So what are the characteristic features of the TMS? So TMS is chemically inert, volatile and durable and also it's soluble in most of the organic solvents. And also it does not interact with the or make any interaction with the sample molecules. And also TMS will give you a good and intense peak and it can be removed from the sample solution easily. And finally, TMS has low electronegativity compared to the other standards. Now we are going to see about the three important parameters of the NMR spectrum. So the first one is chemical splitting. So the relative energy of the resonance of the particular nuclei from its local environment is called chemical splitting. So the applied field strength will be increasing from the left side to the right side of the spectrum. So we can say the left side will have a lower field strength when compared to the upside or right side. So usually the upside field will have a higher field strength in the NMR spectrum. The next concept is spin-spin coupling. So the interaction between the protons in the molecule will give rise to a single peak in the NMR spectrum, which is then split into a duplet, triplet or multiplet in an NMR spectrum. So this study is called spin-spin coupling. So the distance between the two peaks in a spectrum is called as J coupling constant. It is usually expressed as J and is measured in Hertz. The picture shown here has three peaks that is singlet, quartet and then triplet. So singlet will have a single peak whereas other two have a three peaks and four peaks respectively based on the H atoms present in the sample. The third and final concept in NMR spectrum is nuclear relaxation. So relaxation is a process by which spin of the sample come in equilibrium with its surrounding is called nuclear relaxation. So the rate of relaxation determines how fast the experiment can be repeated and also it depends on the physical properties of the atom or molecule present in the sample. The nuclear relaxation are of two types. One is spin-spin relaxation and then spin lattice relaxation. So in spin lattice relaxation, it converts the external energy or excess energy into translation, rotation and vibration energy to its surrounding. And then in spin-spin relaxation, the excess energy is converted or transfers to the other magnetic nuclei with help of the surrounding environment. Now we are going to look at the steps involved in protein structure determination in NMR spectrum. So first we have to get the purified sample. So the protein concentration has to be 0.1 to 3 millimolar concentration. Unlike X-ray crystallography, NMR spectroscopy is carried out with the help of the aqueous solution. The purified sample has to be dissolved in the buffer solution. So then the purified sample has to be placed in the NMR instrument where distant nuclear pattern will be produced with help of the chemical shifting. Once it is done, then the chemical shifting will be mapped to the atoms by means of the sequential working. So with the help of the sequential working, we are able to get the NMR structure, protein structure by looking at the or comparing the known protein structure. The fourth step will be conformational constraint. In conformational constraint, we will be determining the geometrical arrangement of atom and molecule from NMR spectrum by looking at the distance between angles and the distance between nuclei and motion of atom and nucleus in the sample. And then finally, we will be doing the structural calculation. This can be done by using the computer programs by which we are able to get the complete structure of the protein. What are the applications of NMR? NMR can be used to identify the molecular structure and be able to analyze the unknown chemical substances. And also it is used to analyze the mixture of samples, be able to do the quantitative analysis and also it is used to find the relaxation time of the molecules and be able to determine the dynamics of the chemical reaction and also we can find the diffusion coefficient of the molecules. These are the some of the applications of the NMR. Now we are going to look at the advantages of the NMR. It is a non-destructive, non-invasive technique and it is a dynamic technique and we are able to detect any type of molecules like fat, water molecule, ATP molecule and we are able to determine the 3D structure of the any molecule at its native state from its solution itself and be able to find the unique dynamics and molecular interactions with the help of the NMR spectrum. And also it is used to find the macromolecular structure at a higher resolution when compared to the other techniques like X-ray crystallography. Finally, we are going to look at the disadvantages of the NMR. 
So NMR is not suitable for the larger biomolecules since it has some difficulties in interpreting the larger biomolecules with larger molecular weight. And also we need large sample size in order to get the achievable acceptable signal to noise ratio. And it is very sensitive to noise and signal. And also this NMR spectroscopy has major disadvantage is that it is using very high magnetic field and it causes some problem to other equipments in the laboratory. So precaution has to be taken if the lab size is very limited. These are the some of the disadvantages of the NMR spectroscopy. We came to the end of the today's session. We looked at NMR spectroscopy today. Hope you all understand about that. And in next session, we'll be looking at the cryo electron microscopy. Thank you all.